Okay, this is going to be the second of about seven videos or so on potentials and fields and how they interact and work and things like that. So I've already gone over the overview, talking about what we already know about the electric potential and the electric field, the electric potential being a um, scalar field that's related to the energy that would be on an object if you put it there. So if you have an object at a spot and you can figure out what its energy is, what its potential energy is, its electric potential energy is, and you know its charge and you divide that electric potential energy by its charge, that's the electric potential at that point, at the point where that object is. But that electric potential exists everywhere. And I discussed that previously. It, it exists everywhere. It only becomes a potential energy when there's another charge there. When there's a charge at a particular point, then you have enough to have an actual potential energy. All right, so that's that's where we came from at this point. Um, there's a previous video that's part of this. This is part of a longer lecture. Um, so I, how I like to do these things is I like to start off with a question, see how well everybody's been reading, things like that, whether they understand what's going on, um, and then talk a little bit about it and explain why things are the way they are, and hopefully that will improve people's ideas about how physics works and things like that. So in this case, what I've done is I've taken a charged, pen, a charged pair of plates here and put a um, charged ball in the center, and that charged ball is attracted to one of these plates. Um, these have a distance d. It's 2d between these two opposite, opposite plates here. Um, so the question is, is if I can change the voltage here on this second battery, what voltage do I need to put to put on this battery in order to cancel out the field here, assuming there aren't any other interesting effects? Um, and there are what, five questions here. I've got four delta V, four times this voltage, two delta V, two times this voltage, delta V, the same voltage, delta V over two, half this voltage, and E, that it cannot be done. Right, that there's some physical reason why it won't happen at all. And the way this works best is if you pause right now, you write down your answer, you write down a reason for your answer, and then um, you go ahead and you let me talk about it. If you have friends around, you can do the pause, talk, and write down a new answer afterwards. That's even better. But if you don't have any friends around to discuss this with, then you know you can just keep on going on after you've written down what your answer is and why that's your answer. Uh, that's going to be very important for your own uh, self-evaluation so you can figure out whether or not you whether or not you really understand what's going on. And in fact, if you don't understand what's going on, what you don't understand what's going what you don't understand about what's going on. That's also very, very important. So that's it's very important even if you're a little bit confused to try to articulate as best as possible what it is you think will happen. All right. So go ahead and pause. And then we can come back and everything will be okay. All right. Uh, so how should we go about this? What, what are we going to think about? Well, um, first thing we should remember is that these charged plates produce uniform fields, right? And in between charged capacitor plates, you have a very well-defined uniform electric field, but even a very, very large plate will produce a uniform electric field. So we have these uniform electric fields in here um, that we're dealing with. That's going to be very, very useful, because partially because that found equation that we got in the last class was um, the potential difference between two points, right? There's a point and there's a point, is equal to the electric field between those points, um, times the separation between those points. So this D is that separation. Um, there's a minus sign here. Um, that's because the electric field points from the positive to the negative. This is all defined in terms of positive charges. So the higher, so the electric field is pointing towards that negative charge um, which is the direction of the force, uh, which will be the direction of the force on that um, positive charge. 
Uh, so you need that negative sign so that this gets larger and larger. The delta V gets larger and larger as it goes to the um, positive plate in that way. Um, the potential difference is telling you basically how things, which direction is flowing downwards, which direction is downwards. You want this higher um, in the direction opposite of the force because we want downwards to more or less be, or a lower, uh, a lower delta V to be uh, more negative in fact sometimes, to be the um, thing that d determines the force, right? Um, we want to go down, just like if we were going down a hill. Um, and because we want the two E's to cancel, right, we want them to cancel so that this ball goes um, horizontally, um, the new electric field is going to be equal to minus E. So um, minus, e, minus this E, not minus the uh, minus E, right? So when we look at the delta V that's going to go on this um, battery, this lower battery, it's going to have to be minus minus E, which is just E, times 2D, or twice the distance here. Um, and then we can split up that minus sign so that we have this minus ED here, which is the original voltage, this one. We have a minus 2 out there. And um, that means we have minus 2 delta V is the um, voltage on this thing. The minus is, a, is basically accounted for by reversing the battery. So we have 2 delta V. That's the correct answer in this case. So use that to help you figure out what you're thinking about when you're thinking about these um, problems. I'll come back in a moment and I'll talk about the next thing. I'll do a little more in-depth example. All right. Okay. Thank you.